house. We don't come preparing ourselves. Listen to me good. We don't come and prepare ourselves for worship service. We come to socialize the first 15 minutes. Oh, really? Ain't nobody saying nothing, but it's cool. We come so we can socialize for the first part, and then at 9.55, you got about four or five minutes left, you're going to get yourself ready for praise and worship. No, no. Times have changed. All right. Yes, sir. Preach it. Preach it. Yeah, yeah. We got Hollywood members. <laughs> I know this is on, that might be on Facebook, I don't know what it is. Really so we got Hollywood, don't nobody else have Hollywood members like Jordan Temple. You come in and you're strolling down the aisles like everybody, you gotta... Come on, man. You ain't that important. Come into church and prepare your spirit. Prepare your spirit. You don't come in here getting autographs, signing autographs. You gotta let people know what you've been doing last week, what you're gonna do next week. Sit down. Sit down. That's not a time to socialize when you come into God's house. Socialize after service. You're interrupting. That's why I stay in the office. I don't come out here and shake everybody's hand. I can't greet you and talk to you. Not when I'm coming in to worship service. I can't be shaking hands. I don't know what you got on your hands. I don't know where you've been last night. I don't know what you did this morning. I don't want you putting nothing in on me, in me, around me. I want to come out here so I'm ready to serve. But these men, these men, these men, they were willing to participate in this man's deliverance. He had a problem. They were willing to take time out of their lives and go help this man get delivered. If you want friends, here's how to identify friends. How many of your friends going to help you get delivered? How many of your friends going to help you carry your burden? How many of your friends are going to help you carry the issues of life and get you to Jesus? This man had friends that were willing to participate. And so when we look around the house, find you somebody that's willing to help you get to Jesus. I told you, there is a difference between, I know I'm teaching, y'all ain't witnessing, you ain't got to say nothing, I don't know I'm preaching. When you look around the church house, find you some friends that'll help you get to Jesus and not help you get to church. Helping me get to Jesus is putting me in the frame of mind that I'm willing to hear and I'm ready to hear the word of God and receive it. Not help me get in church. Church today is not what it used to be. What you want is somebody that will help you get connected to Christ and the Word to help you get to a spiritual place. When you come into the house, you want to get to a spiritual place as quick as you can. Friends that help you get to a spiritual place, help you get to Jesus, not help you get to church. Because in the midnight hour, Church is going to do you no good. It's going to be Jesus. And so Jesus told the man, he told the man to rise up. He said, you all think that I'm not God. He told the man to pick up your bed and walk. Pick up your bed and go back home. That man refused to live on the mat. He listened to the word of God. He listened to Christ. He says, you know what? They carried me in. But they won't carry me out. I came in one way, but I'm going to leave out of here another way. When you come to the church house, you should be every Sunday, you should leave out better than when you came in. More enlightened than when you came in. 
There should be a greater anointing on your life when you leave out than when you came in. Yes, sir. Amen. You're looking at that man. That man picks up his bed and starts walking. There are some things you got to refuse when you come into the church. I refuse to leave out of here without seeing the glory. Come on, sir. I refuse to leave out of here without feeling the anointing. There's some things you got to refuse. I'm not leaving here the same way I came. I remember uh, years ago, years ago, if I didn't preach, if I didn't preach, I had a couple of members. Uh, <laughs> one of them was a preacher. He was, boy, if I didn't preach, then he was going to the bathroom maybe five minutes because he wasn't listening to nobody else. He wasn't listening to nobody preach except me. Why come to church and the thing that you expected, you didn't get because the wrong man or woman was behind the pulpit? Think about that for a minute. I don't like the way he preached this boy. You're not going to get blessed through him no way. He's just a messenger giving you the mail. Do you know that you can be in the church, sitting in the pew, minding your own business? And it may not be the best preacher, but Jesus can pick you out. What do you think happened to the man with the withered hand? He was just sitting in the service. Nobody was paying any attention to him at all, but Jesus saw him. And the same thing can happen in the church of today. That Jesus can be in the house, pick you out, get ready to bless you, and it has nothing to do with the pulpit or the preacher. Nothing to do with the pulpit or the preacher, but Jesus pick you out. Sometimes you get blessed based upon your expectation. If you don't expect nothing, you ain't going to get nothing. Hallelujah. You walk into the church, you come into church. If something on the inside don't change by the time you leave out of here, then you didn't expect to get that kind of change from the inside out. See, some people, <laughs> nah, I don't say that. Told the man to pick up his bed and walk in spite of the people that didn't want to see you get up. Everybody in the room didn't want to see the man get up. What are you saying? Well, I'm saying this. If you know I'm lame, if you know I'm paralyzed, if you know I can't get up, there are people that are in the house that will leave you just where you are. And they know you got an issue. Whether it be bowled over, whether it be an issue of blood, they know there's something in your life that you can't deal with or it's too hurt, heavy of a burden, they will leave you like they found you. Y'all ain't gonna preach with me. When people leave you, in the bad condition that you were in, and they're willing to leave you there, that should be an incentive for you to rise up. It is the will of the enemy to keep you on the mat. So I refuse to let the enemy See me be carried out of here like I was carried in. If I had a bad Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I walk in church and I'm putting on a, you know, I, I guess I don't have this real spirit of joy, but I can fake it. I can fake it. I know the enemy knows. He looks through all of that stuff. He knows. That what he put on me is still on me. Yeah. 
He knows I'm still in that bad position. I refuse to walk out of here the same way I came. When you get ready to walk out of the church, I'm going to say this. I'm telling you right now, you young people, this is not cussing. It's not cussing. I refuse to let the devil see me or see people carry me out of the church looking the same way that I did when I came in. My objective when I leave out of the church or out of the presence of God is that the devil sees I'm doing a hell of a lot better. That ain't I'm doing better when I walk out than when I came in. Amen. That's it, sir. That's it. Amen. Yes, sir. I'm doing better. And so that's why we entitled this that I refuse or I'm going to leave out better than I came in. Have you seen my mind just, just be going? Yeah. We got to go. When I leave out of the presence of God, I want people to say, first of all, not people, I want to be able to say, yeah. I've been with the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. I've been with the Lord. Yes, sir. My speech changed, my, my, my walk changes, my, de not, my demeanor changes. I've been with Jesus. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. When I get to the parking lot, when I get to the lobby, mm -hmm. this ain't preaching, this is a good teaching. Yes, when I get to the lobby, yeah. I can't stop and talk to you mm. and gossip about somebody else. Why? Because I've been with Jesus. I can't do that. I've been with Jesus. I cannot get to a point that I'll let the enemy see I'm leaving out the same way I came. I may come in depressed, but I'm going to go out with joy. I may have came in here one way, but when I leave the presence of Jesus, y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. That my soul should have been fixed and my soul should have been on fire because I've been in the presence of God. I know things are all right now. This is the place that you can take your burdens and put them upon the Lord. Those heaviness, the heaviness that we may feel from time to time, this is one of the places where you can leave your heaviness here and when you walk out, you feel lighter. I feel lighter. I feel better. I feel like I'm not carried. It's not a chore. It's not work. I feel lighter. I feel, I feel good about myself. I feel good about my next step because I've been with Jesus. All of the saints of God. Don't leave out the same way you came. I thought about that man. Jesus said, Leave, sin no more. Sin no more. Pick up, rise up, and go home. And go home. Check this out. How do you think that man left? Other than the scripture saying that he had the mat on his back, the thing that was carrying him, he's now carrying. Other than that, how do you really think that man left out of there? He didn't have a look at me spirit. 
that guy up there, that guy had to be so happy. He had to be so excited. Because when he got back home, Deacon Fitz, he left the guys who carried him. Y'all ain't thankful. Y'all yeah, ain't thankful. This might be too deep for some. Y'all going on deep. I, I, I ain't got to go deep to see that Jesus just did something to change the man's whole life around. He went back home. He didn't have a bed. He wasn't laying on the bed. He went back home to his family. When you leave the presence of God, how do you feel? Old soldiers used to say, I felt like running through troops. Hallelujah, we got to go. <laughs> I refuse, I refuse. So I hope, I pray, my heart's desire is that the message resonates to every one of you today to let you know that when you come into the real presence of God when you go back home that doesn't mean home is in your address when you leave out of here and come in connection and contact with other people see I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm too visual. I'm, 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 I'm too, I'm too visual. I, I see things in the spirit. What I see is a man that they carried up to the rooftop, and he was on a mat, and they laid him down, tore off the roof, lowered him in. He's laying there paralyzed on the floor. And then what I see is the man taking the mat, putting it on his back, and walking the four or five or six blocks to get home. But he's walking. And I see people asking him on the way. When you left out of here, you couldn't walk. Aren't you the same man? And the man said, I'm the same by name. But I'm not the same man. Because I've been with Jesus. Woo! By the name, my address may be the same. No, I'm not the same man. I'm better than what I used to be. Aren't you the same man? No, I'm not the same woman. Because I've been with Jesus. Woo! Did you have that man? You were paralyzed. Yes, sir. I'm talking to 15 people right now. You were paralyzed. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I get my grammar mixed up sometimes. I didn't mean were, I mean are. You are paralyzed. You're in one position and you can't move. Yeah. You've been doing the same thing in your life day after day for the past several years. Paralyzed. But if Jesus gets a hold of your heart, if you accept him into your life, and lift that off of you, you can reach destiny. You can move into your future. And it doesn't have to be a future where you land on a map. You 
15 people that are here right now in the name of Jesus, I'm declaring a blessing over your life. You don't have to be where you don't want to be. If you accept Jesus into your life, not church to Jesus. Let him into your life, follow his decrees. Flow in his anointing. And those things that were gripping you and holding you and wouldn't let you loose, they'll have to let you go. Loose her. Loose her and let her go. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Listen. I'm gone. Tell yourself, self, I'm not leaving out of here the same way I came because I got a word. That's all I came for this morning is to get a word. If I get a word,